right, we back here with Showbiz at DITC Studios, BX New York. You already know how it is, the home of the hip hop. Showbiz. Yo, it, this looks real official out here, man, but I want to see what you're really working with. Can you show us around so we can show the public? All right, let's do it. Oh, wow, this is real official right here, man. Okay. Yo, what was it like working with Big L? Oh, I mean, every day was just like, this dude was a comedian, first of all. He was just one of the funniest guys, but he was about his business. I always tell the story of Big L and writing the song Ebonics. It took him like two years to actually make that one, one song. And he used to come to me every couple of months and say, yo, I'm almost finished the first verse. And then, you know, six, seven months, he like, I got the first verse. First. And he like, yo, I'm going to do the second verse. So it took him almost two years to do that one song. That's what type of guy he was. Serious about his craft. No question. So what we're gonna do in tribute to Big L is we're gonna get to the Big L. Well, this Big L room right here was built by one of the pioneers and the great Jazzy J, one of the best DJs, producers ever done it. He built this room here for us. You know, he put the sound system in so he can make it bang real right. You know what I mean? And uh sound is great up in here come up in here and check us out you know DITC yeah. Jay's first studio was here or across the street before he went to Allerton Avenue his first studio was across the street that's the first time I ever went to a studio you know and I went in there and master the ceremony was doing uh sexy up in there you know what I'm saying back in the days so I went up in there you know so we're going to take y'all Big L. This is the Big L booth right here. You know, got them carpeted out on the wall. Got them carpeted out. See his name. It was a funeral. Oh, well, you know, we got guys coming. In. Uh, Fat Joe was in here the other day. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the, the regular, the regular crew. The whole DITC was up in here. But you know, we got new guys coming in here spitting some fire, you know. Got my man Hattie Rax, he came up in here, he spit some fire. You know, we had uh, my man Passport Gift, he came and spit some fire. And you know, uh, we just got dudes coming up in here just trying to rap, just trying to carry on the legacy, man, you know. Oh, the rates. Well, the Big L room is uh, 70 an hour, and then we have the B room is 35 an hour. We try to keep it to where people it's affordable we ain't trying to break nobody you know what I mean go through the rest of the studio let me show you around this is the B room see we got DITC you know this is B room for for, for people who want to come up in here affordable for y'all nice they stop you know let me show you the other side a room i mean b room it's the b room up in here you know 35 an hour come through represent Serious about your craft, come see us. If you're not, stay over there. All right, and this is the editing room because we got our own video company. If you want to do videos, come and see us for videos. We got editors on standby, edit your shit too. You know what I mean? This is the kitchen. We have the chef come up in here. If you're in here doing studio time, the chef will come and cook you some food, you know?
And this right here is really a event room, all purpose. You can do little listening parties in here if you want. You can practice your your skills on the turntables, DJ. You know, you can do interviews like what we doing right now. You know. Well, you know, cause uh, when we were coming up, Jazzy J had a home for us to to you know uh, get our sound together, to have a home where we can meet and work on our craft and try to better our, our production and and everything like that. So I just wanted to do the same thing that was done for me. Just have a spot for people who were serious. You could come in here and do what you do, same way we did it, and you know, it works. If everybody. That's serious about their craft Come and do what they do You know, success is around the corner So I just wanted to do the same thing That Jazzy J did for us You know what I'm saying? Yeah Yeah, back in the Bronx Well, me, me and Diamond Back in the days, me and Diamond met each other Doing Electric Boogie And we both we both found out that we each other loved DJing, so we connected from DJing, and then we started a production company because once we got into uh, drum machines and everything, we figured we we were just partner up and making a, produ- a production company, and then Finesse got signed and everything else just went on from there, but started as a production company with me and Diamond D, from us DJing to producing, and uh, Lord Finesse was the first album that him and I produced on. And DJ Premier So we all started in the game together Me, Diamond D, Premier And uh, Lord Finesse No Funky Technician Lord Finesse And DJ Mike Smooth I mean it was a good time for hip hop back then 1990 was a good time And we just came out back to back Straight up like after Lord Finesse You know we just went Back to back Every member of DRTC Came out every year Behind that You know what I'm saying And we just flooded the game Well uh, AG was a Battle Lord Finesse In his high school So when Finesse uh, Made his album he, he called AG up Told him to come Get on the album And I met him there And AG didn't have a DJ And I didn't have an MC so we just connect from there and we did Party Groove Soul Clap, which was our first EP. Then we went on and get signed to uh, Polygram, which is Universal now, and made uh, Runaway Slave and we made Good good Fellas. You know what I'm saying? That's how that happened. Do you understand what y'all made at that time for us? I'm 41, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? This yeah. is the, I was at the peak of it all when Runaway Slave came out and, and Soul Clap, like, know the energy y'all came and, and spread it across the, the globe man we was just trying to make good music man we was trying to do what everybody around us that we respected was doing also you know we came up in the era of course you know tribe called quest and p rock and everybody else that was rocking so we was just trying to make good music and impress our peers you know what i'm saying so you know i'm glad that people enjoyed it you know what i'm saying but we was just trying to do what everybody around us that we respected musically did It's a whole different day. So they, here and there, they got some music that I could kind of dig. But, you know, I just think it's a different time right now. And they doing different things as far as because we, we were more creative when it came to trying to pick unique sounds. And we, we were more creative when we were, trying, we, 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 were, we were trying to compete with each other and just come with our own thing. I think nowadays, you know, the, this generation is really... It, is really trying to do what everybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's just a different day and not to knock nobody, but we just had a different lane when it came right. to being creative. You know what right. I'm saying? We came from the era where no fighting was allowed. Yeah, definitely. You had to come with your own shit. You know what I mean? Nah. Well, you know, 90s is considered as the golden era. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I doubt if we're going to re- recapture the, the energy that was that came out of the 90s. You know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys out there that's creative. If they, you know, if they if they do what they do and become known and popular, then 
It is what it is. But basically, the 90s was the golden era. Pretty much the best, one of the best decades in hip-hop because you can't take away the 80s, too. You know what I'm saying? Well, I might add that the 90s, for commercial hip-hop, was the was okay. And there's still good music being played today. You just have to go search for it. It's not on commercial radio anymore. It, the sound now is so commercialized. Everybody sounds the same. All the music sounds the same. But there is good music out there. So once again, we're here at the DITC studios. You already know what it is. We're in the BX. Shout out to Showbiz for showing us around. You already know. You can holler at them at 347-847-7945. In the streets, we bringing it to you. Rough, rugged, and raw, hardcore.